Hello, welcome to Factorio Vanilla Playthrough, episode number 40. The big 4-0. Alright, that's a big looking blueprint. You can't even see half of the blueprint on the screen. That is my 400 science per minute blueprint that I obtained from my previous playthrough. Now that I've uh, started scrolling around a bit, you can kind of see how big it is. Right now we're looking at uh, mostly just the, the unloaders. I did have to rewire how the trains work. The train tracks have been rewired. I put this blueprint right against the southern wall just um, west of the repair belts that come down from the upper base. So there are some artifacts from the blueprint that I had to remove and that's what I'm doing right now. Those train tracks um, you know, didn't match up the system we have now at all. And I'm hooking it up to the wrong track right now. <laughs> That's the return lane, not the entrance lane. There we go. And the first thing I need to do is fill in the tracks um, so that I can get the supply train down and so that it can return too. So I block... <laughs> I brought plenty of track with me, so that won't be a problem. So this is the um, the return lane. And the supply train has made it. So I quickly offload all the junk that I've accumulated so far. And let's get to work. We've got a lot of um, a lot of construction bot work to do here. Now, if you've been following this series since the early days, back in episodes maybe uh, two, three, or four, or five, something like that, you may recall that at one point I said something to the effect that later on when we're playing this game, these roboports are really going to become important. We're not going to be building anything by hand. And... This is the type of thing that I was referring to. Um, I mean, literally, it would take hours to attempt to, to build this science factory by hand. And I don't really get a chance to stop and describe the different parts of this factory. I may do that in a, uh, maybe in the next episode. So it it requires, I think there might be like 800, maybe 1,000 blue undergrounds to make this thing work. Uh, the beacon count, uh, probably 700, maybe 500. I don't, I don't know the exact numbers. At one point in time, they should have actually been on the screen so that so that anyone could, you know, scroll back. And perhaps while I was hovering over something, the, uh, the counts might have been there. I think the total part count for this thing is like 1,700.
Now I did put down some chests and there's enough robo parts around so that the local construction bots that are used to repair the wall are going to be taking part in this construction. And I went ahead and you know put down uh, yellow chests and then added parts to the chest so that they could um, start distributing stuff out into the blueprint as well. So science requires copper, iron, plastic, steel, sulfur, coal, stone, brick, lubricant, and sulfuric acid. So uh, that's, you know, that's what the unloaders are uh, set up to do. Uh, eventually, I'll have to redo the uh, the unloaders quite a bit. The lubricant and acid happens to be switched around from the way it was in my previous playthrough. Um, and I used to ship sulfur and brick and then coal and stone on separate trains. And that's changed as well. And the way that I loaded trains with two items has also changed. And I just realized that uh, I made kind of a mistake that I'm going to have to fix. I didn't set up my trains properly. I didn't um, divide the cargo wagons into two separate units for each of the two types for trains that carry more than one uh, more than one item. And so now that basically the trains will just be loading whichever item happens to fill up first, you know. So if I had uh, coal and sulfur being loaded, and I only had a little bit of sulfur the wagons would be completely full of coal and the sulfur would um, would only get a few slots and therefore uh, wouldn't load evenly at all so uh, I have to actually go back and fix that and I just realized it now so several trips the supply train had to make um, the first thing that basically has to happen is we need many, many undergrounds. And you can see that's what I'm continuously pulling. And that's why I we have such a high count of bu you know, buffered items up in the item mall. That's why we have, you know, a thousand, a thousand uh, undergrounds, cute, you know, space for them and so that the item mall can work on those things while we're not building anything and then when it's time to build time you know time when we paste one of these big uh, science blueprints the item mall can can keep up with the pace basically uh, so I don't have the research labs as part of my loadout on my supply train so I had to come back to the the item mall to grab them So now we got quite a bit of the blueprint um, 
put down. There's still lots of beacons to add and then the um, the speed modules inside the beacons. Still grabbing undergrounds. So this particular science blueprint is 400 science per minute. And the existing science that I set up at the starting base that, that we used to do all that research at the beginning of the uh, playthrough was uh, 15 science per minute. <laughs> that kind of gives you an idea of the scope of uh, where we're going with this thing. And the my previous playthrough was a 2,000 science per minute base, and I had five of these blueprints placed down and operating at the same time. And I was thinking of actually adding another 2,000 science per minute to that base, but... Um, uh, that I didn't end up doing that, um, and I started this new series instead. Hurry up, supply train. And now we're we kind of have run out of our surplus of items in the item mall. And usually the thing that ends up backing up and slowing the supply train down, like like it is right now, are the um, the number three speed modules. My speed modules are actually done in such a way that it's kind of um, it's kind of wrong because I use way more of the number three speed modules than I do the number three productivity modules, the yellow orange ones. And yet we have half of the speed module build in the item all is you know making half and half of those it should be making probably you know maybe one and four so one of the productivity to maybe four of the speed modules but uh, four speed modules would just be enormous as far as uh, how much factory it would take to make those because right now we're just we've got two of those modules you know being made and to have four of them would be just huge we'd have to have just a huge string of blue circuits and and tons of red circuits and i'm just you know i think i'll just keep on just leave it the way it is because it's it would just be a lot of work for you know and all we're doing is saving like an extra half an hour that would take to you know is because as long as you just let it the, let that count build up where when you actually start building something, you know, you have a whole bunch of that stuff surplus, then it's, it's usually not a problem. So here, I just ran up there and did something. Well, I was, I needed to make some iron chests. And then I'm, you know, clear back. Why, are, why are we so slow? Well, the reason why the Undergrounds are slows because they're running out of iron plate, so You can see the belt providing iron plate is nearly empty. So I went over and adjusted the The bus a little bit to try to share some of the iron belts And here I put a 
a splitter there just to, to provide iron on that one belt that was going over. And I, you know, when I first set this up, I kept some of those surplus counts kind of low because I, I didn't want to, you know, run my base out of materials at the time because I was trying to, to add more and more things. And but now that that most of those productions are caught up, I I can probably um, readjust some of those surplus items, especially for undergrounds, to be a lot higher than they are now. So as you can see, there's a lot of train traffic on the rails now, and I have to, I have to be uh, really careful not to get run over. It's not most of the. The blueprint has been laid down, and I went ahead and just pulled up all these roboports that are that are linked up with the uh, the roboports on the that are repairing the wall, so that there I won't have any interaction. And I'm actually returning some of those construction bots back to the system. Once I pulled up the robot port, so we started getting blue chests, requester chests, that were flashing the error saying that there was no robot port near them. That's the yellow flashing that uh, shows up. And I had to remove, uh, basically remove those chests from the, uh, the blueprint. The reason why they're there is because that they would return items in my inventory. It allowed me to to dump items in my inventory into yellow chests and then those items would be um, returned back into the system to be reused and the reason why I had items in my chest in my inventory was because I was working on this blueprint I was adjusting it I was tweaking it and every time I would, you know, need to, to pull up a belt or, or remove an assembler or even, you know, t change a, an inserter, I would get stuff in my inventory. And, you know, you can't just keep, well, you can just keep putting chests down on the map, putting stuff in them, and then shooting the chests. if you. But I just, just you know, I put down those blue uh, requester chests just so I could redistribute all the things I was picking up as I was working on this blueprint. I've had this blueprint now for quite a while. I've, I've used it and and I'm, you know, I'm kind of fairly happy with how it works. And I haven't had to change it in quite a while, so that's why I removed those just instead of just leaving them there because I don't really like to, to have things flashing warnings up unless it's something that's you know an actual problem so now we're running short on the number three speed modules and they're being built fairly slow as well because you know, we probably need like 250 of them, and I'm only making like um, 12 per minute. <laughs> so it's, you know, the slow trickle.
So now we're going to start setting up the rail and adding trains and, and getting them going. There's when I found out that my um, acid and lube had been reversed. So I had to reverse these as well to match how it's being loaded at the loader. So the acid's on the front and the lube's on the back. And for some you know reason I didn't I just didn't even think about it. I just put plunked it down and and designed it the way it is on this map and in the other map it was opposite. You have to put both of those items. You, so if you run out of acid, but you still have lube, you want to, to the, the thing to go back and fill up again and bring it back. You don't want to sit there without any uh, sulfuric acid and 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 not have it filled up. So you have to, to test both of those items when you're trying to to combine items on the, on uh, trains like like these are. But of course, in the some in the case of something like copper or iron, you know, you just say, oh, just you know, fill up, fill up at the loader and empty out at the unloader. That's all you have to worry about. So my new way of doing uh, split trains, trains with two items, is to use stack filter inserters and uh, unload one type on one side and the other type on the other side. Um, the previous way I used to do that was I had the, the first two cars would be loaded with one item and the second two cars would be loaded with the other item. But you can see that the, um, the unloading part was really difficult. And my unloaders that I'm actually tearing that up right now and replacing it with uh, the, the way that the others are done. The, the way that it's done now, that you just unload, you know, one half of one item on one side, one half on the other side. Then you have four belts of the items, and they're split. You know, one one side is steel, and the other side's plastic. It works really well, but I did have to redo all these uh, unloaders because they were, you know based on the old style. And unfortunately, I didn't reserve space in each of the cargo wagons so that half would be filled with one and half would be filled with the other. And right now, it's just going to be filled with whatever happens to land in there first, which is kind of bad because we'll see here in a minute that the uh, sulfur and coal train uh, was completely... Um, broken because it was just contained all coal. There was no room for sulfur at all. I'm not sure. I just I just didn't think about that and how I originally designed it. So the good thing about by having you know half the entire four cars either uh, contain one or the other item is you don't have to worry about how it's loaded with the previous way that I used to do it I'd have the first two cars steel and the second two cars plastic but you always had to to remember which one you had on the front and which one you had on the back because it had to be unloaded properly onto the, the right belt to get down to the assembler to do the thing that's supposed to do with that particular type of item. And if, you know, I constantly had to, um, you know, double check to make sure I had gotten the, the, uh, the unloaders in the right order so that, you know, the coal went on one side and the sulfur went on the other. It was just kind of, uh, it was it was more difficult than it is now because now I don't have to worry about 
um, trying to match the cargo type to the the actual cargo wagon to the type that's going you know because the main thing is that it needs to go down into the factory on the right belt if it's the belt doesn't contain the proper thing it just you know obviously the thing doesn't work and that's one of the crazy things and if you decide to play factorio I almost guarantee you one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to have the wrong thing go down the belts and you're going to be like running trying to stop it and trying to f to quickly flip off one of those belts to to go the other direction because what's going to happen is you're going to have all those belts containing the wrong thing and depending upon how far it goes and how long it it's kind of like having running water in your house. I mean, the water damage <laughs> kind of depends on how long the water is continuously is unable to run. But yeah, you're going to run, you know, end up chasing those those things down the belt trying to stop it and and you're going to have to spend like 15 minutes cleaning up all the mess because the wrong things went down to the wrong Yeah, it it's it, you know, it, it's just one of the things that happens to, every, to to all the factorial players. And then you you learn to be really careful with with what you do. But I mean, it can happen. I almost, uh, there are many ways that you can get things contaminated and, and things going down the wrong. You can have the train go to the wrong station, and then all of a sudden you got all this stuff that uh, you have to deal with. Okay, so here's our uh, sulfur and coal. Now, I don't even have sulfur and coal being loaded yet at the loader at the transfer station, so I have to actually go up there and, and set that all up. This is the first time I've ever needed it, so I didn't uh, actually bother to, to get it working. So we're going to just climb on the the train and go up there and fix that. So I decided since plastic's being loaded from the new plastic factory, we're not using this this plastic anymore. And I decided to just unload the plastic off those belts and then uh, just divert the some of the sulfur down for now from the original base. I didn't have any, there's no, I couldn't get the, that plastic into the chests. Because the, uh, the logistic bots don't care if the chest is further away, they usually go to the chest that's closer. And so that the new plastic factories unloading directly into the chests on the transfer system and that those plastic chests the other ones that we stubbed in from upper base that's just uh just too far away so it wouldn't even unload so <clears throat> you can see we're making a miserable amount of sulfur right now and just to to help speed it up a little bit i went ahead and uh threw in another chemical plant and then uh, added some beacons well, I just added one beacon, but I did put modules in the chemical plants to help speed it up. We're probably making, you know, four times the amount of sulfur now, but it's, it's still not quite enough. And that's something that, that I'll have to actually add later on. Is, uh, I will, what I'll do is I'll add sulfur to the transfer area from uh, the same factory that's going to make sulfuric acid and lubricant since that's all related okay so I you know I hadn't even set up the requester chest with the the types yet so coal on one side the sulfur on the other and so now we're actually getting uh, those items in the requester chest, but there was a bug 
in my inserters and they're not, they're not the inserters aren't actually pointing to the cargo wagons they're pointing to the request they're pointing from the cargo wagon to the requester chest as if they are an unloader as if, as if it's an unloader so yeah and I didn't realize that and so here I am back down at the base and and you know eventually I realized my coal and sulfur train hasn't shown up yet So I have to go back and and uh, attempt to remedy the situation. Yeah, it was completely empty. <laughs> what in the world? And then I did that same funny thing I did many, many playthroughs ago. It was like, oh, I got those inserters reversed. And so I switched them around. But then by adding in the top ones to point the right direction, the bottom ones all of a sudden started taking everything out that was going in the cargo wags and putting it in the chest, right? You know, you can see it's actually loading copper into the chests directly below it now. It's like, oops, and so I yanked those inserters out and then put them in the right way. That's not a real big deal because the, the coal is just going to go right back into that train. But now that train is completely full of, of coal and there isn't any room at all for sulfur. And like I said, like three or four times in this video, that that I didn't add in the, um, I didn't set up the, each one of those cargo wagons to be half coal and half sulfur. It's just completely open, so that the inserters can just put whatever they want in there until it's fill is filled up. So when it fills it up with coal, because there hardly isn't hardly any sulfur available. But now we're actually getting some sulfur into the factory. And so we're actually producing science packs. And uh, here in a minute, we're going to actually uh, do some, uh, some, some research. And I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised on how quickly it uh, is able to perform. The first research that I do is was kind of a mistake because I didn't have any logistic bots to move the science from the the chest that where it's being made into the chest where it was inserted into the uh, research labs because I'm using logistic bots to move science around rather than having to use belts but I forgot to load the logistic bots into the RoboPort so the first time I the first training will just be what it would be like with the old system the system that's up in the uh, existing base the original base so there we go I think that was without logistic bots. So now we have logistic bots. And look at that. <laughs> that was the that's at 400 science per minute. Now one of the tricks about the 400 science per minute is that you have to to cons be able to kind of consume that much science. So you have to set up your research labs so that they're effectively using that science in order to make it like a 400 science per minute build. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was, you know, fun setting up the new science and we'll be uh, adding some more things later on. And anyhow, thanks for watching. <laughs>